Hi there, it's Jeff Woods, and here's something very special for Rush fans. I don't know if you know the series Classic Albums, but it's, it's the definitive series. Going right to the source, going right to band members to find out the history of their classic albums. In this case, Rush, two albums, 2112 and Moving Pictures. If you ask Neil Peart, he reveals that 2112 to him was the actual beginning of the uprise of Rush internationally. But let's take it back further than that, because Rush fans know it started a little bit earlier when a believer of this band in Cleveland talked to a believer in Chicago and this Canadian band that couldn't get signed in their own country suddenly were on their way. Check it out. We originally re released the record on our own label because no one would release it in Canada. A series of events happened that were just wonderful. We had a radio station in Cleveland and a, and a music director in Cleveland that loved the record and started to play it. And the program director there, Donna Halper, in turn, uh, called a friend of hers, Cliff Bernstein in, in Chicago, who was at Mercury Records, talked to him about it, talked about the response that it was getting. He got a copy. I just put the album on and I was blown away from the start. Uh, made some inquiries and by the end of the day we had signed the band. Okay, you know the expression, do or die, right? Well, if we go back to 1975 with the band Rush, that's pretty much what was going on in their career. Their first album got them signed in America. Their second album moved the needle a little bit more. Their third album looked like it could be their last. Here's what happened. That summer of 75, a, a certain gelling came together. And Crest of Steel, I see in retrospect, was weird as hell. But we loved it so much. It was a dark record. And uh, coming off Fly By Night, I think it was just a little too much too soon. We suffered a great disappointment after that when the rest of the world didn't share our affection for that record. And uh, we went out on, on tour after that into the fall of 75 and things were not going well. You know, the, um, we were having trouble getting dates and a lot of them were ill attended and our road crew started calling it the Down the Tubes tour. And there was a great deal of pressure on the band at that time from a record company for management to maybe take a couple steps back and think about where you're going, guys. I think that a lot of people at the label were concerned that the progress wasn't fast enough. You want a quick payoff. And I think that there was probably some pressure on Rush to become you know, more commercial. After Crest of Steel came out and wasn't more successful, Terry Brown and I actually flew to Chicago and met with Mercury Records, who were debating whether to drop the band or not. We basically created the assumption that the next record would be more commercial and would be less concept, of course. And we got out of Chicago with the, the deal intact for one more record, breathed a sigh of relief, and then it was up to Terry and the band what they were going to deliver. And there was really one of two directions that we could go at that point after we were after we toured Caress of Steel. And that was either to give in to the pressures or to just say, you know, screw it. We got mad, you know, we got angry and thought, okay, if this is our last shot, we're gonna give it everything and we're gonna do it our way. Okay, now let's get a little closer to the heart of the matter and the purity of the musicians in Rush and a song that is a great source of pride all these years for fans in their hometown of Toronto. A song distinguished by just three letters. YYZ was really exciting for Torontonians because it's our airport code and it was maybe Rush's nod to coming home. We were in an airplane flying into Toronto listening to the Morse code, which is YYZ, the airport, and I just, the rhythm stuck in my head. Twenty-one twelve and moving pictures. It's classic albums featuring Rush. Over fifty-four minutes of bonus features, including interviews with the band. It's fantastic, and it's specially priced at HMV.